Hi friends, it's Thursday, and just like normal, you're right where you need to be here watching Gun Stuff TV. Today we have a special guest. Mary Helen Shashi is going to be with us talking to us about gun socks, and we'll be talking about concealed carry. Thanks for joining us. Tell your friends and share this right now, and stay tuned. Hey, well, thanks for watching, guys. Um, we have some special guests. Thanks for coming today. We've got Mary Helen Shashi. Did I say that right? You said it right on. And then Ron Norton. Did I say that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And Ron is with MKS, who helps handle and distribute and do the work, uh, the heavy lifting, I guess, of getting your product out the door. Isn't that right? Actually, MKS is a partner, but Shooting Depot is my primary is distributor. So Ron is actually uh, with Shooting Depot. And you've got lots of uh, lots of hats, and I see you're, you're you're wearing your ranger outfit here. Yes, yes. And you've got lots of fun stuff to sh show us here today. Absolutely. And thanks for being on the show. We, oh, well, where did we first meet meet up with you? We met at the NRA show. Uh, your good friend Glenn Bellamy, a patent attorney, who I believe is in the studio right audience. There. If he's not back there, <laughs> stand up, wave to us. There, there he is. Okay. He uh, he's also friends with Ron Norton. You kind of find that people. Uh, kind of mingle together, you yeah. know. I don't want to call it ancestral, but it's ancestral. And so, <laughs> you, uh, Glenn came up to me and says, "Listen, I met some this fella from Gun Stuff TV. He needs to meet you." And then you came up, and that's how it worked out. And you did a video for me, and everybody saw it because the next show I went to, people saw me on Gun Stuff TV. Well, you've got some great products. You know, uh, before we get started, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, I wanted to tell our viewing audience to be sure to tell your friends and comment on this stream. Now, you might be watching us on YouTube, could be Twitter, Periscope, uh, Facebook. Make a comment today, and you folks can win one of our very handsome hats. Uh, try one of these on here, Scott. Show them how they look. And Scott Kiefner is with us. By the way, he's going to report to us a little bit about his activities last week. So look how nice he looks there. And we had a winner. All you have to do is comment. And our social media giveaway for this last week was Gary Hoff. Now, Gary, I sent you an email, uh, and we've already packaged up your product. Tell your friends about it, and be sure to wear that hat. Now, if you guys would like to get one of these yourselves, all you have to do is make a comment on any of the platforms that you're watching, and uh, your name will go into a drawing, and we'll give out as many hats as, as we have available to, to send out. Now, our sponsor today is Faxon Firearms. Now, you folks all know about Faxon. We've been telling you all about it. Scott, you did a really nice video, and, and it's in our email bag. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to, and uh, you'll be able to see our video on the Faxon FX19 Hellfire. It comes in two flavors, the Compact Patriot, which is you know, a little bit more compact than you were using, Scott. Last weekend, you were shooting this one, yeah. the Hellfire, and you were raising hell with it. Where, where were you last week? Uh, so last week, we had a chance to go down to Rock Castle Shooting Center in southern Kentucky. And we got a chance to go through the running gun. It was a 9-11 Memorial running gun held down there. Uh, it was a 5K. We ran fi uh, five stages, if I'm not mistaken. We did five, five stages of fire. So you run, a, you run about a, uh, a K, and then you do a stage of fire. And we just had a lot of fun with that. It was a uh, rifle and pistol. So I shot the Faxon uh, uh, 5,500 upper and the Faxon uh, Hellfire pistol, and they both performed great. You know, Scott, a lot of people don't know where that's right down where Mammoth Cave is. Yep. A lot of folks don't know that Mammoth Cave covers 400 square miles underneath Kentucky. We might might be underneath uh -huh. us for all I know, yeah. but you actually went down into the cave system and that was part of the stage. Yeah, as part of the park, the, the Rock Castle Shooting Complex was uh, used to be a golf resort but that uh, went out of business and they opened it back up as a shooting complex. And there is an intricate cave system down there and you got to get a chance to go in and shoot inside the cave. And uh, we'll see some of the footage that I'm sure we'll, we'll have on the show at a later date, but you, we shot in absolute pitch black. They didn't allow any lights whatsoever. There was a couple chem lights thrown off to the side, just enough for you to be able to identify your target, but everything else was shot in, in complete darkness, and which was a very strange, uh, and we'll get into more detail of that on another show, but it was a very strange sensation to get into an actual you know, simulated gunfight in a complete darkness. 
Well, that was a lot of fun, and yep. we were there. Uh, Chris and I both were there, jogging along there with you, having a good time. I did not go down into the cave, but Chris did, and he yep. got some great footage. A lot of fun. Yep. So, so today we're talking a little bit about concealed carry. Uh, the FBI had a report here. In fact, I'm going to show throw this up on the screen for you. The FBI has recently released active shooter incidents in the United States in 2016 and 17. Uh, there's a report that indicates that 10% of crimes that qualify for inclusion in the paper were stopped by a law-abiding citizen, by a law-abiding citizen with a gun. Now, this figure represents more than a three-fold increase from the study just three years before. Now, concealed carry, that's a big thing. And uh, so, What's the whole idea behind concealed carry in the first place, Marie Helen? As far as my products go? No, I, yeah, yeah, or just in, in general. The well, that's, that's something that's spoken of a lot, and mine boiled down to a, a personal story for concealed carry, because my, my company was known for making tactical sports bras and bras for, for horses. I'm an apparel person. That's what I'm known for. My brother, who is a tactical person, was looking to carry in church and wear in his wear with his suit, um, so it's deep conceal, not look like a gunslinger, but be able to move, in particular, move comfortably as if he was wearing nothing. And so I saw him one day, and he said, "I can't even walk from my car to the church; they're so bad." And I said, well, "What do you have?" He goes, "I've bought every ankle holster there is." And so. He showed them to me, and as soon as I looked at them, I said, well, that's not going to work just from, because I, they all had a high center of gravity. They don't cover much. Uh, I mean, just as far as the physics go, it's not going to be able to, uh, it's not going to be able to stabilize that weight and mass for what you're doing. They're going to be great as long as you're standing still, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I found sports bras were the same way. They're great. You're standing still. That was a problem. That's why people like sports bras. So uh, I developed this product for, for Ronnie. And actually, they talk about, we have an article, in, uh, a three-page article on guns and ammo this month. Check it out, and it talks about how we developed this product for uh, with Ron. Three pages in guns and Indeed. ammo. Indeed, yeah. yes. You know, that's almost as big as being on Gun Stuff TV. It's a, it, you know, no, it's not. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> But I met them at the same show yeah. that I met you. And so what I found is, is when I was demoing this product, and we'll demo it for, for everybody in a second, it, it's such a wow product, especially if you've done ankle carry before, because ankle carry has been such a disaster. The gun bounces around. If for law enforcement, if you don't have your own I lost my gun story, you're sitting next to somebody. Or here's what I think is far, far worse about ankle carry or their experience in law enforcement. It's not just a lost the gun story. It's you're always moving in anticipation for either the, you're losing the gun or pain, which means oh yeah, you're, which means you're moving funny and apprehensively. So if you need to engage with somebody, you're not going to do it because you're always protecting this unstable thing on you. So you're you're in a a, 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 a squirrely spot all the time, and so just as an outsider, when I'm looking, I said that can be fixed easily. So when I uh, when I made this product, and it's called a gun sock, and it's a totally different concept, totally different paradigm about how to do it, and we'll show you how to do it. It is, the, it, it is now known as the only ankle carry that is uh, for running, jumping, kicking, fighting, any combative movements. It feels like you're wearing nothing. So, and, as far, and because what it does, and we'll show you in a second, because of the way it conceals, it pulls back on the grip, um, it's a true deep conceal, so you can what you would wear it undetected from your movements and also from your silhouette. Now that'd be important, wouldn't it, Scott? Now, Scott, yeah. as you know, Scott Kiefner is a former air marshal, retired mm -hmm. air marshal. Uh, did you guys ever use ankle holsters? So we got into using ankle holsters when we first started. We were coming up with every conceivable way we could to try and. Uh, go deep conceal but still have access to our firearms and we tried every wing uh, I made my own rigs at one point we were making uh, compression vests we, everybody was coming up with all these different ways but the biggest thing that we had in, in the air marshal system is you had to train with what you were using so if you had something specially made you had to bring it to the range because you know things had to be approved by the agency so you would come out you'd you'd wear it on the range for the day you would shoot your actual qualification course with it you would go through all the all the motions and some of the stuff that we we had that, we, that was really great about ankle holster because you could sit on a plane and you could lean back and you could 
across your leg and you could have full access to your firearm right here and be on a plane and still look completely normal and have your hand right here on your firearm mm -hmm. and bl completely blend in with the, everyone else on the plane. But you and didn't have the gun socks though. No, we didn't. No. So, <laughs> and so one, you, you kind of had to have your hand like this because it would print. Uh, but there were. But as soon as we got into any defensive measures, any running, and, and just the, just like she said, everything. As soon as you got on the range and you started putting it to the test, they all came loose. They all came one way or another. And 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 there's been a lot of evolution in, in ankle holsters over the last couple of years, especially especially here. But the at the time, we just didn't have what we needed to actually get the job done. So it was just so so you've solved a lot of these problems. Like cause I, I would see sitting in, in an airline, you're not really running. Around very much, but for regular duty officers, they they got to get out there. So, well, didn't you, you bring? A, don't you have a, a, a sample or something? <laughs> I did. Can you show and, us here. And as far as what you're talking about, like well, if you're in air you're going to be sitting all the time until you're not. Yep. <laughs> until you're engaging. That's the, you know that's the thing. But no, it has solved this. It's also this is going to be his size. Right. Give that a slip on to show him. Right. Uh, and we have it comes in two styles. It so we're going to actually put one yeah. on here. Yes. Okay, let's give this a shot. It comes in two styles. Now what he's got on here is the original angle holster. This is for this is for when you're wearing shoes or at or uh, low tops uh, three quarters. Okay. And uh, Ron's going to make sure he's going to guide him through. All right. So you want to pull it up, fold the top part down. All right, the reason why you want to pull the top part down, we've all seen those ankle carries that have a garter system to them. One of the things you're going to see with ankle carries so is that it, they operate on a cinching system, tight. You know, we don't do that. It's all, it's, this is huggy feeling, not diggy feeling. So you don't have that, that squeeze because that what on the top, and that's what that pull down on the top does. So you don't get slidage. All right, so when you go to holster, has he got the, has he got I'm going to go ahead and use this. I'm going to go ahead and use one of our Walters here. All right. All right, so pull the flap out uh, away, and with uh, both fingers, I'll share like on this one as well. You do want to use both hands when you're holstering, yes. but just pull the flap out and slide the pistol all the way in all right. until the trigger guard is completely uh, covered. There yeah. you go. And one thing I want to emphasize is when he's holstering and when he's handling this this product, mm -hmm. you're not going to break it. When people feel this and they don't feel like it's leather, they're thinking, oh, yeah. i got to be careful. No, pull it out. It's As you meant see, to be beat on. It's abs the comfort level is un unbelievable, and it's not firearm specific. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, like, if you want to carry a, a compact uh, nine one day and then a revolver the next day, you can. You don't have to have a different holster for each uh, each pistol. All right, so stand up for me, sweetie. Yeah. All right, I want to show a couple things on this thing. I'm coming around in my high heels. Hold on, everybody. All right, so face the camera. All right, let me see. The All right, so here's what it's doing. Let's pull you up a little bit. All right. Let's Doing face adjustment? this way. Yeah, face yeah. this way. All right, so first right. thing I want you to see, this is the kind of retention we have. We've covered the whole firearm, and what it's doing is pulling the grip back towards him. So what we've done is we've lowered the center of gravity. So when you do that, it takes very little tension to stabilize the whole firearm. That's what stops that pendulum feel that you get. Mm -hmm. from Because when you see others, when you see other uh, concealed carry methods, what you're going to always see is the retention is going to be something parallel to the slide with the grip hanging out. So with the grips out, that's what's creating that pendulum system. So you should. So because also it's a better conceal because it's pulling it back. When, but I wanted to show one thing. Mm -hmm. Give me a couple kicks and jumps. Let's <laughs> see what happens. Anything moving? No. Nope. How's it feel? Feels good. It's solid. It's staying right in one spot. It's not sliding around. Shouldn't move. It's not moving around on my ankle or anything. It's staying exactly where I, exactly where I parked it. So what? what another thing about that product? Mm -hmm. on, it has holsters on both sides. So you have two pockets which means you can do inside carry or outside carry. The empty holster is what you would carry your personal equipment, your mm -hmm. extra magazines, your tourniquet, whatever. And yeah. like say like, okay, why would somebody do a outside carry? Some people, yes, do outside carry. But let's say you're on an ATV, you're on a horse, you want something that you want a straight down draw. Mm -hmm. So with one product, you can have be left-handed, right-hand, inside carry, outside carry. Riding a motorcycle. Right in the motorcycle. Like, yeah. oh, exactly. We need to show the draw. Because yeah. in, the, in the guns and ammo magazines, oh, um, they showed a draw which is not the, the most ideal way to draw. So you know, that's one of the problems when you do a sort of a second rate. Uh, I, media, I, we uh, don't uh, have that problem with yeah, you guys. Exactly. I mean, everything is always right on the money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Ron's going to show you the draw. Okay. All right. Okay, on the draw, of course, typically with a, 
uh, deep concealment like this, you'd want to go to a kneeling position. Of course, I always recommend, you know, find concealment or cover. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you go into a kneeling position, ideally, you just put your finger underneath the flap, and with a quick snap, you can pull, pull it up, yes. and the pistol's completely clear. From there, you can... I mean, Breaks hit free. that thing. Yeah. You're not going to break it. You so want to it's, use, the, uh, use the elasticity to and, completely cover the clothes. But the retention of what we're calling it is combative retention. And another thing I want to point out is where I want to get away from really calling this a holster because it's not. It's a compression garment for CCW. Mm -hmm. uh, completely different platform than what the holsters are. And uh, the level of comfort, well, the first time, I, and I was probably one of the toughest sales this young lady had because uh, was terrible. I. He had a bad experience. I. Yeah. Uh, over four, over yeah, 40 years of oh. <laughs> over 40 years of concealed carry, that, I, yeah. I can count on one hand the times that I chose an ankle carry uh, to do it. I just I didn't like it. It was uncomfortable, unstable, and the last time I remember wearing one, I was running down the road chasing a suspect, and my Model 60 went flying down the road faster than I was. So you know that, that's it. Uh, but the first day I tried this, I wore it all day long at the. At, at the end, now I've been getting a lot of heat for We just did a video and uh, maybe my uh, Victorian thought process when I said at day's end, as in day's, the end of the day, not a day's end hotel. <laughs> they, um, I mean, you at, at the end of the day, I, I, uh, in the hotel room, I forgot that I had a, uh, a little nine millimeter strapped to my leg. Totally forgot about totally it. Forgot. That's when you know you got a great holster. Um, you know, and, and we, you know, like with, and I'm a big fan of compression style thing. I mean, like, with there, you know, custom made. There's so. one drawback we want to point out. Uh, one of the reviewers uh, pointed out it is so comfortable. He forgot that it had he had it on, and he was walking into places that he was supposed like to be schools walking. Schools and hospitals. Yeah. And, this kid and he right just now. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's it's that comfortable, and uh, uh, a lot of people were wearing them. I found it so comfortable on the leg I was wearing it on, I've started wearing one on each leg. That way you get compression on both sides and you get an option on this one. I carry an extra magazine on this side. On my right leg I can carry a tourniquet, knife, whatever I want to have in there. But it gives you an opportunity to carry a lot of different uh, well, and one equipment. Of the big, one of the big things that is coming along in fitness in fitness industry itself is compression socks. Yes. You know, so I well, mean people exactly. wear these. I mean, so, you know, compression on your, on your lower extremities is, is a good thing. And especially like with, with like with us and the air marshals and, and problems we had with deep vein thrombosis, clotting mm. in the leg stuff, sitting, anybody that sits in a position, if you're uh, working in, and it doesn't have to be an air marshal, it doesn't have to be a police officer sitting in a cruiser for eight to 12 hours on a shift, it could be the person that's sitting behind the computer in the office all day that the, the compression would actually help. Yeah, exactly. You know, one of the things when, I, when I've been going to shows about this product, and showing it to, to people and, and uh, w what you'll hear is like, well, why would I do ankle carry? That's a f long way to go to get down there. I'm not an air marshal. Mm -hmm. And the response I give them is, if you are in an active su shooter situation or you are taking defensive cover, that's where you're gonna be. If you're sitting, that's what's gonna be accessible to you, not, not around here, you're gonna be down so it's actually the most accessible area, but it's it's counterintuitive when somebody says, "Why would I?" Well, and it's also just one of those things, you know. When when, when you train for your gear, you're training for the specific holsters, the specific weapons mm -hmm. that you carry. You know, it's, it, I'm not going to have you train all day with this Faxon and then hand you a wheel gun at the end of the day and expect you to perform the same. You, you know, you, you're training with the gear that you use, and just just like you, any other hip holster. Under a, a mm -hmm. shoulder holster or anything else, you want to train with the gear that you're going to use. Exactly. Yeah. Now, and one thing with this, your clothing will really be the only thing that restricts the size of a handgun you carry. I had uh, one gentleman come up at an event. He goes, Hey, Ron, check this out. Now, he's a big old boy. He's wearing bibbed overalls. He pulled his pants leg up. He had a full size 1911 stowed inside the gun sock. That's how now, we tested the, That's how we tested I'm gonna have, <laughs> But I'm going to have to break the news to you. I mean, skinny jeans are out for you. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Now, yeah. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, well, excuse me out. Now, one of the things we're going to show is we're actually have two styles of gun sock. Um, he has the, the original uh, ankle holster on, the original gun sock, which is down by to be worn with shoes. Ron has what we call our mid cap, and these are designed for boots. And it, this can be uh, worn in two different ways. Yes. If you're wearing a cowboy boot or a loose fitting boot, um, or if I'm wearing uh, 
I'm a Mavid uh, motorcycle rider. Uh, if I'm out, I'm riding my adventure boots. Um, my boots will go over the top of this. This will bring it in and it'll get, get snug. And that keeps your, uh, a lot of people carry a handgun or a knife in their boot anyway, but what they find happens, it's falling down around their ankle. This will keep it in the right position and you can bring it up t higher, so it's, that's why it's called the mid-calf. But the same token, because of the design and the diameter of the, the base of it, if you want it in a, a tactical boot or a work boot, a uh, six or eight inch boot, you can wear it over the top of the boot mm -hmm. and gives you a very comfortable uh, platform. And, and, and again, uh, works exactly the same as the original. It just gives you a little different option with it. It does, but you can't have one style that hits everything because the, the, the main difference between the two of the bottom is the diameter of the bottom. So you can't get a mid cap and try to wear it as your ankle, uh, as your ankle carry. You won't, you won't be happy. It'll, it'll, it, won't, it won't be against your ankle like you'd like it to be. Now, one other thing I wanted to uh, talk about with this product is uh, we had some State Department people looking at it, and mm -hmm. they said, uh, we need one-handed holstering, you know, and they wanted thermo heat protection because the way they were training is they were shooting off 30 rounds and reholstering. So not a problem. So Ron will show you what we added here. We So you've got heat protection in this. Yep. Well, what we have is an optional uh, a Kydex sleeve that can go in. Now, this does then become a specific uh, platform, but if it's an agency that requires that. And what we do is we provide a coupon in each yep. gun sock so that um, we want to keep this as, as simple as possible, but uh, and w we don't want to be in a position to provide a Kydex um, holster for every handgun out there. Yep. So what you can do is you can then send this uh, take this coupon for twenty dollars. You send it in, and we have a company that we've partnered with, and they will uh, build a Kydex uh, holster specific for that. It's about a ten day to two week turnaround. You get it back, but it'll come in and fasten. Um, we've got a little uh, eyelet on each each one of the gun socks, so it'll secure it. So now that's stable in there, and uh, it doesn't really change the profile much. It just gives you a little more rigid um, uh, structure inside the gun sock if you choose to go that direction. So yeah. how many people are using that, uh, Mary Helen? It, it, typically agency people agency. like that. Yes, they, that's department that, that require it. Otherwise, we don't hear much. But we wanted to make it something adaptable for them because they because if they're wearing ankle holsters, they want the benefits of this because this solves such, this remedy is just such a big problem that they have that we want to be able to fall in line with their specifications. Well, right one-handed holstering is in law enforcement is, is kind of a big deal in the fact that, you know, you may have to be controlling a suspect. Sure. You may have to be, you know, pulling someone from a car or mm -hmm. opening a door or whatever, just being able to go back to your holster is, is a great benefit. But when you're in deep cover, it's not always a necessity. You know, you know, exactly. you're, you know you're going deep cover, you know you're going to have to take a second and put your gun away. But one of the things we always teach on the range when we shoot is that it's a race to get the gun into action. It's, it's you're racing for your life. When you're pulling that gun out, you're going as fast as you want to live. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes time to put the gun away, the race is over. Right. You know, you're putting that gun away because it's usually safe for you to put it away. So I don't usually have too big a too big of a take up about you know, And you you hit it spot on. You've got to train with it. No matter what platform you're using, you gotta train and be uh, proficient with it. Now, Mary Helen, uh, we're starting to run out of time. You've got some new products I that are coming out. Now, Ron, you said this is special advance notice just for you gun stuff viewers. Mm -hmm. and, and nobody has seen any of this stuff. Only and my it's mother. not quite, not <laughs> only you? My mother. You're, 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 okay. All right, so, but they are coming out soon. So tell us what's going on here. Please, Ron, Ron gives the best description for it. Well, we've got. Um, I've, I've struggled for many years on, I do a lot of outdoor events, uh, a lot of, uh, I like off-roading, uh, I've got a uh, Wrangler Jeep, uh, we've got quads, uh, we ride in side-by-sides, we're, and we're constantly looking for a way to be able to stow uh, a handgun uh, where you don't lose it, and you keep all the dirt and grit, and that's another, another thing I want to point out on this too before we get into that, because they both will do it, the, one of the primary one of the greatest functions of this is the fact that it en envelopes the entire firearm. Uh, what's the number one cause for a failure? Dirt and grit. Uh, so uh, when you've got the entire firearm enveloped in there, that's going to keep a lot of that grit, dust, and dirt out of it. Well, we came up with a concept 
Uh, it's a bar gun sock. Now, this bar won't gun. be available until after bar the first of the year. It's a brand new product. Uh, we've worked the bugs out of it. We're, it's in production now. It's going to be a little while before we get, uh, get it released, but it's going to be a, a 2020 product. But basically, it uses the same concept, same thought process as the gun sock, mm -hmm. only where your, your pistol will fit down inside here, totally envelope it, but it zips on. Now we've got a little foam filler go, go in there. It'll work from a <laughs> one inch bar. We've got this mounted on a bicycle, standard bicycle crossbar. Oh, yeah, that'd yeah. be good. Uh, all the way up to uh, uh, roll bars on tractors, uh, heavy equipment, and uh, wranglers. Square or round, round yeah. Yeah. it works and, on. Okay, and, and sort of like a golf golf cart. It would golf work. cart. Because uh, what this does is because it, it's it's compatible with any two inch diameter. Uh, tubing all the way down to one inch and so the difference is it's like you put it as is here on a two inch and this this is what the filler is that makes it because you can't make this smaller well they won't the draw won't be right so right, we work yeah, that yeah. out and but the point is it camouflages that firearm like you wouldn't believe to the point and i'll have to beat up on a couple friends of mine or that i was worked with on the police department i had um had my pistol stowed in this set up inside my jeep wrangler yep. I said, guys, I got, a, I got a gun hidden in my Jeep. Find it for me. They spent 15 minutes looking around. They oh, could yeah. not find the pistol. They never stopped to look over the top. It's right up here on the roll bar, easy access, quick to get to. I mean, if you side by sides are so popular now. Yep. If you happen to roll side by side or you're in a really rough area, the pistol's going to stay in position. And no matter where you're at, you're going to be able to have. Uh, uh, have some protection with you uh, and you know, how important that is that when you're in bear country or you're out now uh, the guys in Alaska we've just spoke with one retailer who just uh, they've got stores in Alaska and he goes yeah. this is they're gonna love this in Alaska I'm so a, I want one from a passenger side my driver's side and the back of the Jeep yeah. so and, <laughs> and, 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 in the, back and the beauty of it is the retail point on this is gonna be under $40 wow. oh, so that's, that's uh, so it's and, and expensive yeah, yes. <laughs> a small investment worth a small investment, and and it's not, and you're not going to be uh, restricted just for firearms. You're going to have an opportunity to be able to sew something away. But uh, the, where the neoprene is uh, pretty much water resistant, nearly waterproof. But we want to make sure people know. I mean, if you still pistol in and leave it in uh, inclement weather, you're going to have a you're going to have issues if you don't take care of it. Yeah. But it's going to keep the dust and dirt while you're out. In the backwoods and keep it keep it uh, in working order. Now, now, what's what do we've got in here? Because we're just about we're going to have to sign off here in just a moment. Here's what we found about fire rigs. This was brought to my attention. Another situation where somebody brought something to my attention mm -hmm. that because of metal kit kit carry in in the armed forces as well as in law enforcement, mm -hmm. they're packing so much stuff in there. People are getting really big and wide, and and the shifting. It, it was affecting their maneuvering okay. about how they can run. So we made this. This is basically a gun sock for your leg. This holds all your medical equipment. It gives you the option of carrying a firearm as well, but you can run, move, and maneuver, and you can pack a lot of stuff in there. And again, it feels like you're wearing nothing. First responders, here's a full first aid kit huh? for the first responders. And so many first aid kits, when you when you see them, they're open bulky. That they're, we got a tight shot on that. Open yeah. that up one more time. Let everybody see how much gear you actually have in there. I mean, that's... Yeah. There's a lot of lot of gear. We've got our uh, tourniquet, and, and and there's a pocket in here where you can stow a handgun. With a trigger guard. Uh, so, so you don't have to worry uh, about the, uh, and it's not just for first responders, uh, but people hiking, uh, equine. Um, when or you're on a motorcycle, you're constantly looking for a place to stow stuff where it's easy access. And what I really like about this for a motorcycle is that if you happen to take a spill, all your gear, your tourniquet is where it needs to be. It's mm -hmm. on you. So uh, all your, uh, uh, you can stow your telephone. Um, it's just, it's going to be a great product for across, across now, the board. Now, is that's also a 2020 product? It's a 2020 product, yes, sir. Well, Mary Helen, you've brought, you brought everything we possibly need. <laughs> and uh, uh, Scott, his guy's got a special glow. I know he's going to want this and, and tell some of your friends yeah. in, back in the Air Marshal Service. And we want to tell you folks to share this with your friends. Now, by the way, we, as is our tradition here, we always have giveaways. Now, remember, do some commenting. Uh, and, you know, I know what you're going to be doing is 
you want them back and me here less. And uh, we're going to try and make that happen for you. We have to have you guys come back again. Hey, why don't we add to your contest with a comment, throw in a gun sock. Throw in a gun sock. Of uh, your go. choice. That's yes, with the hat. Nice. So with the hat. Some, do some commenting, and you better be nice to me. And then uh, <laughs> we'll throw our gun sock. It's, it's such a new product that you know about it, tell your friends. That's a great deal. Yeah. Now, this week's Adco giveaway, we have a giveaway every week. As we show people uh, it, the, the thumb saver, this week's giveaway is Edward Lopez. Mm -hmm. Edward, we emailed you today, and uh, send us your address. We're going to send this right out to you. And if you folks want to uh, register for the ADCO giveaway, just go to gunstuff.tv slash ADCO. Well, I want to thank you again for being with us again. This is right where you're supposed to be every Thursday at 2 p.m. Tell your friends about it and come back again to see Gun Stuff TV Live. Thanks for watching and thanks for you folks being on our show today. Thank you for having us.